hey y'all so excuse the appearance okay i just came back from a walk um but i've been mulling over a few different topics and they're starting to weave together right now so i went to go write down excuse me focus hello i'm right here i want to go write down notes and uh this is how far i got just this <laughs> um and i was like oh no we're just gonna we're just gonna talk to the camera and see where we get to so how about lighting okay how about it um so the other day i was at church still don't like this hold on okay the other day i was at church and um it was a testimony service and a man went up and gave testimony about how his wife um, waited on him to come to the Lord. And it was over a process of many years of kind of inviting him to church, um, kind of not making a big deal out of it, if I'm remembering correctly, and kind of just, you know, inviting him until one day he accepted, right? And I was like, okay, so just like the, the word says, okay, this is where we're going to get into um, First Peter. Um, chapter 3 where it says in the same way you wives must accept the authority of your husband um, even then even if some refuse to obey the good news so obey the Lord or or obey God um, so it says let me just then even if some refuse to obey the good news right um, your godly lives will speak to them without any words. Let's park over here. This camera is, is, she's doing something. Bothering me is what it is, though, is what she's doing. It's bothering me. Um, okay. So, park here, right? So, just from the testimony that was given, she invited him. Didn't make too much muss or fuss, girl, but just invited him until one day he accepted, right? So in this way, right, if in this case her husband did not serve the Lord, she won him over by her actions, by her inviting him, and then by her going and continuing to go and having some stability, okay? Um, and then it says they will be won over by observing your pure and reverent lives. So they will be won over by the way you live your life, basically. Um, we'll revisit that. So then it says, do not be concerned about the outwardly beauty of fancy hairstyles, okay, expensive jewelry, um, or beautiful clothing. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. So that's how I got here, right? So I was like, oh, she won him over by a quiet and gentle spirit. And it took me here to read the whole thing, right? Um, so that's what God really calls beauty, right? Is a quiet and gentle spirit is better than your outward appearance, right? Because your outward appearance could be and your spirit is trash, correct? Okay. Um, so in that instance, she won her husband over with a quiet and gentle spirit. Um, she wasn't battling him about not going to church um, until he was able to observe for himself and then take a chance and go to church. And now he's been going to church. Um, and then we scroll down here, right, where it says husbands. I just got to this part. So it says husbands in the same way you husbands must give your give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are. <laughs> but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Treat her as you should so your prayers will not be hindered. Treat her as you should so your prayers will not be hindered. Amen. Um so in my in my head I was like which person are you? Asking myself and now I'm asking you. Which person are you? Are you the wife or are you the husband? And to be honest, this dynamic shows up in marriages, but also in just regular life, right? So we could be the person that's trying to win people over with a quiet and gentle spirit or, well, okay, in that dynamic, we could be the person trying to win someone over or we could be the person that needs to be won over. Um, or we can be the person that is required to 
um, love and pray for an, one person or the person that needs to be loved and be prayed for. Um, and in each person's life, we take that role in, in different, you know, setups all over. Um, but which person are you, right? So I had to really think, like, do you, the original goal and message was do, are you like an arguer? Are you somebody that tries to run people down with what you want to say and how you feel? Or are you one to win somebody over with a quiet and gentle spirit, right? So, I mean, in each case or in certain circumstances, you know, things are required, right? So maybe a forceful and more boisterous presence is needed. And other times, maybe just, you know, a quiet and gentle spirit is needed because that's what the person needs, right? Um, and I don't know why I keep like layering on this, like what, which person are you? And the, the getcha gotcha is that again, you're both, per you're both people. I'm both people. Um, so in some situations I need a forceful talking to, or I need that gentle talking to, but in other situations, I'm that person that's supposed to bring down the hammer <laughs> or, you know, like, you know, wash the person with their words. Amen. <laughs> or have a quiet and gentle spirit. Praise God. Um, so I just thought that was interesting for me to think about, right? Just from a testimony and just from the example of um, men and women about husbands and wives, what wives should do, what husbands should do, but it's also what we should do, right? So it's not necessarily just directed at husbands and wives, although it, that's how you are some pointers on how you keep your marriage like together, girl. And I'm just reading from the Bible. Ain't nobody married over here, but um, that is the understanding from what is read, correct? That this is how you're supposed to treat each other to make sure that your marriage is strong. Um, and as you read in the bottom part, that your prayers are not hindered, okay? Um, but that could be, again, that's just for regular life, how you treat people. You don't automatically start treating people well when you get into a marriage. <laughs> your character is still your character, if you took it in or if you left out, right? So that is something to do is examine yourself. And I think that's where I'm coming to. It's a roundabout way. But examine yourself. What is your character like, right? Um, and then how do other people receive that? I'm just thinking. But y'all, if this made sense to you, I'm literally just coming to like, just throw this out here to you. But if this makes sense, drop a com. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and I'll talk to you another time. Bye.